Simon, you will wait for me, won't you? Greta was running her hand over the flat of my tummy and heading south. Yes, of course, my love, once we have graduated we will get married and settle down. It was our last evening together before we both left for university, Greta's parents were out and hinted they would be late back. We are going to different universities, mine was in London but Greta had won a scholarship to study in Australia. We wouldn't see each other for nearly three years, the airfares were just too expensive. The following morning I left for London. It was my first evening at university and of course where do you go when you don't know anybody? The student union bar. As I walked in it was love at first sight. I saw sitting alone at the bar, the person who was going to be my future wife. I loved Greta but this was different. Then I had a shock, I was looking at a boy. But there was something about him. He was slight of build, more like a schoolboy than a first-year student. Looking closer, I could see he wasn't overly feminine, although the straight shoulder-length blonde hair didn't help, but there was a shrouded beauty beneath the boyish facade. I wanted a drink so I went up to the bar. I stood beside him, ordered a beer and remained to enjoy my drink. I wanted to know more about him, but I had no intention of chatting him up. He would be embarrassed if he misunderstood and thought I was coming on to him. So I knocked over his drink as if by accident a classic I know putting down my near empty glass. I'm so sorry, let me get you another one, I offered. I then turned to the bar staff. Can you replace his drink, please, and I'll have the same again. Two fresh pints of the guest ale appeared. There was no need for you to do that, he responded, but thank you. I was clumsy, you shouldn't go without. My name's Simon, by the way. I offered him my hand. We shook. I'm Bob, I'm a fresher. Are you too? Yes, I just arrived today. Well, I don't know anybody here, it's nice to talk to someone even if they spilled my beer. We chatted for a while and we got to know each other enough to say hello if we meet again. Which I intended to do. Later in the week, the students' union organized a society fair. All the different societies and sports clubs set out their stalls to woo members from among the new students. I arrived early and kept an eye out for Bob. After about an hour he appeared. I kept out of sight and noted the societies that he showed interest in. There was only one that took his details. I couldn't believe it, it was the University Bridge Club. I could play bridge and was quite proficient. My grandparents played and I was also roped in when visiting them. After Bob left the fair, I visited the stall and signed up. Lectures had started with the inevitable coursework. Three weeks later, when the first bridge club meeting was due, I was looking forward to a break from studying. But of course, I was hoping Bob would be there. He was. Hey, Bob. Are you interested in bridge too? Hi, Simon. So good to see a familiar face. Yes, I am. I'm just waiting on the club secretary. She is sorting out a partner for me. A middle-aged woman came up. She must be on the university staff. She looked at me hopefully. Hello, are you a new member? Yes, I replied. I signed up during Freshers' Week. Are you Simon? Yes, I am. I'm so pleased you came. We get very few young people nowadays. I have been trying to find a partner for this young man, but all the existing members are paired up. You two are the only new members, do you mind being partners? Of course not, we both replied simultaneously and with grins. I couldn't believe I was now my intended partner's bridge partner. And before the first month was up. At the next bridge club meeting I suggested going for a drink afterwards. We did and over time we began to socialize more frequently and we became good mates. I sought no other close friends, I was focusing on Bob. Bob didn't seem to be the type to attract girlfriends or to be interested in boyfriends. Everything was going well from my point of view. Even contact with Greta was getting less frequent. I wasn't showing much interest in her, she would only be second best now, and she told me she was making new friends down under. It was getting towards the end of the year and I needed to arrange my accommodation for next year. I had an idea. Bob, would you like to rent a student flat with me next year? 
I knew he had made few friends. Yes, that would be great. But could we afford it? For only two of us, no. If we shared with two others then it would be more affordable, but we would have to share a room. Separate beds, of course. Bob laughed. Of course. But I was serious, sharing a flat and a bedroom would bring us closer, but I had no desire to sleep with a man, however feminine he looked. We found a flat and I advertised for two students to share. Fortunately the demand was high and I soon found what I was looking for, a pair of lesbians. Sharing with men would not be conducive to what I had in mind. Straight girls may have been a distraction. A lesbian wouldn't be interested in being any more than a flatmate. As four flatmates sharing a temporary home we got on well. And there were plenty of feminine reminders around, including lingerie hung to dry and a bathroom full of cosmetics and lotions. The next opportunity came quite unexpectedly early in the autumn term. All four of us were invited to a party in a shared student house on the same street. There was a catch, or theme if you like. You had to go dressed as a member of the opposite sex. It didn't appeal to me, but I showed enthusiasm and said we all had to go, hoping that Bob would join in. Now I knew I would look just like a man in a dress, my physique was just too masculine. But for Bob it would be different. It was clear to me that the girl's clothes would fit him and that they would enthusiastically turn their darling Bob into a realistic girl. They did surprisingly well. The girls got to him to remove all his hair and have a close shave, he didn't have much but it was noticeable. They tidied up his eyebrows and his nails. They washed and styled his hair, it was usually scraggly but now it was shiny and looked like the hair of a model on the shampoo bottle. They made up his face, they brought out that hidden beauty I saw last year. I didn't see them, but I think he wore a matching bra and knickers from one of the girls. They told me they stuffed the bra with rolled up tights, but not too much. I did recognize the top and skirt he was wearing, one of the girls had worn them to a party a couple of weeks ago. The top was sleeveless and sparkled with sequins and the tight miniskirt was black. His legs were encased in sheer black tights. He has the body of a slim teenage boy, but with the top and skirt he looked like a lithe young woman with delicate breasts. I was enamored. Unfortunately none of their shoes fitted, but they borrowed a pair from a willing friend of theirs. They were kind to him, they were sandals with two-inch block heels. At the party all the girls were dressed as boys, but still looked like girls. Most of the boys looked like pantomime dames or had made no real effort, two balloons shoved under a pullover, that sort of thing. Count me among them, I wasn't going to buy any clothes for the party and very little of what the girls owned would fit me anyway. But there were a few boys who did look like girls, including Bob. Bob is naturally shy and he was nervous but it wasn't long before a new Bob emerged. I don't know what it was. Instead of looking like, say, a meek man, he now looked like a normal woman and other partygoers treated him differently. Was it because he was now a center of attraction and not looking a little weird? I decided to join him, at times he looked like he might need help, besides I wanted him to feel that it was natural for me to be with him. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Some of the women are having a go at me for not joining in and dressing as a man. And some of the men also think I'm a woman and it is a party after all. I'll stay with you and pretend I'm your boyfriend. Thanks, Simon. I am enjoying myself, I'm not sure why. Well that was good news. We were among the last to leave, we didn't have far to go. It was the middle of the night and not necessarily safe for women to be out on the streets, especially wearing party tops and short skirts. Bob walked very close to me and then as four youths approached he took my arm. You don't mind, do you Simon? I don't feel particularly safe and you are a man who looks as if he can take care of himself. By the way, my balloons had been burst early on. Of course not, that's what friends are for. He kept hold of my arm long after the youths had passed. We did look like a couple well suited to each other. I had been toying with the idea of administering, secretly of course, female hormones. But I was hesitant, because it could go disastrously wrong, especially if we weren't to get married in the end. But seeing how Bob looked so natural as a woman, a beautiful one at that, I decided he should enjoy an enhanced experience as if it were. 
I tracked down a supplier where I didn't need a prescription and added the hormones to his food, carefully avoiding mine of course. The next opportunity came courtesy of the girls. They came back quite excited from their monthly club night. Bob and I were sitting in the living room doing our things, when Sue said. The club is celebrating the first anniversary of its monthly girls' night by having a competition. What's girls' night? I wondered if it was for lesbians. On girls' night anyone dressed as a girl gets in for free, whether they are a girl or a boy. It's a quiet night and the management hopes the girls will attract admission-paying boys. I don't think I want to dress as a girl just to get in for free and neat men, responded Bob, if that's what you are thinking. No, Bobby. They call him Bobby with affection ever since that party, but would you for a cash prize? Maybe, he replied, but I'm hardly going to win a beauty contest. But there are three prizes, one for the best girl, one for the best boy dressed as a girl and one the best drag queen. But only the best boy gets the money, the others get free membership for the year. And with our magic, you will win hands down. The regulars don't make the prettiest of girls and most overdo it and would fall into the drag category. I was expecting Bob to say no and I would have to persuade him, but he surprised me. I'm up for it. Anything for money, things are tight at the moment. But only if you help me and, Simon, you come with me to keep away unwanted attention. The girls shrieked with delight and I did so, but quietly in my head. Things just get better and better. We have two months to prepare, said Sophie, she was the more pragmatic of the two. You will need to be able to dance and behave like a girl, and in at least four-inch heels. We will borrow some from our friend and you can start practicing. The shoes appeared the following day and whenever he was home, he wore them. I was surprised he did not trot off to lectures wearing them. The girls decided he should go to the regular girls' night the month before, so he could get a measure of how he should behave, and for fun. I went as well, even though they got in for free and I had to pay, and between the three of us we protected him. I had high hopes, Bob, no Bobby, would win and I would be one more step closer to my bride. We decided that Bobby should have his own outfit, we all chipped in on the basis we would share the prize money. We all went shopping and it was Bob's idea that he should go as Bobby. This would be his first public outing as a woman, other than on our street on the night of the party. I don't think it was because he was looking for a thrill, I don't think he is into cross-dressing, well not yet, but it would help build up his confidence and, most importantly, buy shoes that fitted well. The girls did Bobby proud. This time they got him into a pair of high-waisted skinny jeans and a chunky off-white pullover, a leather biker jacket and pair of borrowed ankle boots with two-inch heels. He looked like just a female student and blended in well. I don't know whether it was Bobby, Sue or Sophie, or all three, who couldn't make up their mind, but we went from shop to shop. But eventually they found the perfect dress. It was in silver and hugged his body, very short and with spaghetti straps that glittered. He came out of the changing rooms, where he was under the watchful eye of the girls, did a twirl and had my heart melted. Forget the contest, I wanted to be his date for the night. In a shoe shop, they found a perfect pair of shoes to go with the dress. Thin silver straps and four-inch slender heels. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to walk around the shop. They also bought a pair of ankle boots similar to those he was wearing so that they could be returned to their friend, but with three-inch heels. The girls were encouraging him to wear higher heels and he didn't seem to make a fuss. We went to a Weatherspoons pub for lunch, cheap and cheerful and good beer. Another first for Bobby, his first meal dressed as a girl. Instead of his usual ale he joined the girls with a white wine. They even persuaded him to go to the ladies with them. I thought the shopping had finished, but no, apparently Bobby needed his own underwear. They bought a pink bra with detachable straps and matching knickers. I do hope he wins, this is getting expensive, but he's worth it. The regular girl's night went well. Being early winter, Sophie lent Bobby one of her coats and he wore his new ankle boots, changing into his heels when we arrived. Just like the party, Bobby's bubbling personality came to the fore and he was a center of attraction. More than once he grabbed me as if to say I'm with him. 
Sue spent a lot of the time helping him with his dancing and Sophie taught him basically how to behave like a girl who goes clubbing. He also danced with me, not in close contact, but with romantic going on exotic moves. The day of the competition came. Sophie didn't have any lectures so she helped Bob to become Bobby once again. He did have one lecture but he gave it a miss. She gave him a thorough going over, removing any growth of body hair. She applied false nails, in the same pink as his undies, and set his hair with gentle waves. She had borrowed from a cross-dressing friend of hers a pair of breast forms, to fit his a cup bra, and what she called a gaff, as there was a good chance his knickers could be seen and we didn't want unsightly bulges, even small ones, she said. Bobby got dressed in Sophie and Sue's room. Sophie came out and said I give you. Miss Gina. Gina? Bobby came out like a confident young woman quite at home in four-inch heels. I have to tell you I share a bedroom with Bob, as you know, but I was aroused by the vision before me. I had suggested in case she wins he ought to have a proper girl's name and we went with Sophie's idea, Gina. I hope you like it, said Gina looking at me as if she was seeking my endorsement. I think it is a lovely name, I replied. I really do and Gina and Simon sounds really nice. Gina came and sat next to me on the sofa, and that's when I noticed what superb legs she had. I always knew, but I was now seeing practically their full long length from the hem of her skirt just covering her crotch down to her elegant shoes and with no tights, just bare wonderful legs. Sue got back, gasped at Bobby, she didn't know about Gina just yet, before disappearing into their bedroom with Sophie to put their glad rags on. Well, Gina, how do you feel? Oh, Simon. I'm exhilarated, nervous and unsettled all at once. Why do you feel unsettled? I'm not sure. A man like me shouldn't look like this, but it feels very natural and I'm proud of the way I look. Is there something wrong with me? I can't really answer, but I will say this. Bob is my best friend, my mate. Gina I'm getting to know and I really like her. When I see you now dressed as a woman, I can only think of you as a girl, as my best friend too. And, no, I don't think there is anything wrong with you, you are a very well-adjusted person. Thank you for being frank. Simon, can I ask you for a favor? Of course. Can you be my boyfriend tonight? I want to feel safe and enjoy myself. Wow, this is going better than I could have hoped for. Yes, girlfriend. I leaned forward and gave her a kiss on the cheek. She blushed. She stayed close to me all evening. She only danced with me and sat with me. She took my hand as we made our way through the clubbers. I was proud of her and of the admiring glances we got. The competition announcement wouldn't be long now, Sue and Sophie came and joined us. People, said the DJ, it is now time for tonight's special competition. All evening judges have been out on the dance floor drawing up a short list. They are now making their way through the club inviting nine lucky girls to come up and join me on the stage. Excuse me miss, said a young man to Gina. Congratulations. Would you make your way to the stage please? Despite it being the reason we were here tonight, Gina looked surprised. She hugged Sue and Sophie and then gave me what felt to be a very close hug. She made her way to the stage smiling at everyone as they made way for her. As she climbed the steps, I saw a flash of her pink knickers and smiled. They announced the drag winner first. One delighted queen and two smiling, but clearly disappointed, runners-up. They announced the boy dressed as a girl winner next and I saw Gina's face drop for a moment. I felt sorry for her. She clearly was better than the winner. And finally, the best girl of the evening is, Gina. There were four very surprised girls on the stage. The DJ didn't notice. And now our club manager will present Gina with her free membership. A balding, but fashionably dressed man, stepped forward and presented an embarrassed Gina with some flowers and gave her a hug followed by a kiss on each cheek. Meanwhile I made my way to the stage, followed by Sue and Sophie, to rescue Gina before it became too much for her. Later, when the management discovered their mistake they came up with an additional cash prize. Good for them. But the publicity was favorable, Gina was now a VIP. When we got home we had a celebratory drink before we retired to bed. 
Gina undressed in our bedroom, she wasn't abashed that I saw her in her bra and knickers, just as he wouldn't be if I saw him in his underpants. She hung up her dress in his wardrobe and put away her shoes. She retreated to the bathroom to remove what little makeup she was wearing but Bob didn't wash his hair or remove the nails until the morning. Things went back to normal for most of the next term. Except I noticed that Bob was flicking his hair, now much longer than the shoulder-length hair he had when I first met him. And his complexion was becoming softer. He occasionally went out as Gina, people who didn't know Bob mistook him for a girl. I was very pleased with progress and decided just to let things just take their course. The end of the term was approaching when I received a wedding invitation from a cousin I hadn't seen for some time for me and Greta. Obviously, she didn't know Greta was in Australia and besides I wanted to take Gina. Bob, I've been invited to a wedding just after Easter and I would like you to come. Why would you take a mate to a wedding? I wouldn't, but I would love to take Gina. But wouldn't you want to take Greta? I had told him about her very early on, but not that she was in Australia. We haven't been in contact since Christmas when she sent me a WhatsApp greeting. She is no longer my girlfriend although we haven't said as such to each other. Gina is the closest I have to a girlfriend now. Can I think about it? Of course. That night, while we were still awake, Bob called across to me. Simon, I'll love to come to the wedding with you as Gina. I went to sleep that night, a very happy man. You do realize I have nothing to wear, Bob said in the morning. Don't worry, I still have my share of the prize money. I'd love to buy you a new dress. I still have my share. I can buy shoes, a bag, and a hat. I was delighted, Gina was going to dress for a special occasion. She will look gorgeous. And of course, though she doesn't know it yet, she is going to meet my family and they are going to judge her, of course they will. We told Sue and Sophie, they were very excited and decided to stay over the Easter holiday to get Gina ready. And they chipped in their share of the prize money. They said they were keeping it for something special and they couldn't think of anything better. This time I wasn't involved in the shopping, they wanted to keep it a surprise. Meanwhile I arranged to hire a morning suit, yes it was a formal wedding, and a car to take us there. The venue was in the leafy outer suburbs, but I didn't want to travel on the London underground dressed in our finest. The three of them spent hours in the girl's bedroom, I was starting to worry we would be late. But Gina eventually came out. I couldn't believe the vision I saw. If the club thought Gina was a real girl then my family and the guests would have no doubt at all that Gina was anything but a beautiful young woman. The dress was white with a red, yellow, and orange floral pattern. The straight skirt stopped just below mid-thigh, she wasn't clubbing today but she is only twenty, and the bodice hugged her body, but not too tightly. But it was the low neck that caught me, it was clear she had breasts. The hormones were working. She wore an ivory-colored short-fitted open jacket with three-quarter length sleeves. Her naturally blonde hair had gentle waves and fell to one side. She wore a fascinator, also in ivory, and carried a small rectangular clutch bag and wore sandals with three-inch heels, also following the ivory theme. Her red lipstick and nails matched the red in her dress. Her nude tights had a sheen and I was surprised to see she was wearing a sapphire pendant that matched her eyes on a thin gold chain, which highlighted her cleavage, a thin gold chain bracelet, a small rectangular watch with a gold strap and sapphire drop earrings. She has had her ears pierced. And I could detect a delightful fragrance. She was complete! I later found out that Bob had been home and borrowed most of the jewelry and accessories from his mom. That must have been some conversation. Sophie and Sue looked like proud mums, I wonder if Bob's mum would be proud too. We left the building, Gina took my arm as we walked to the car. I helped her into the passenger seat. I was pleased as punch. On the way, I had to ask. Gina, I can't help noticing that you appear to have breasts. I do, Simon, but they are not fully developed. I kept them hidden from you as I didn't understand what was happening. You may have noticed with this dress that my hips are wider and my arse is larger. I went to see the university's doctor and she took a blood sample. She doesn't know what is happening, but believes that I'm undergoing a sort of late female puberty that's now changing my partially developed male body. 
She is proposing hormone therapy to correct the balance, but I'm yet to make a decision. But today, I'm happy to have this body and to be who I am. That's a relief, the doctor hasn't diagnosed the real reason for Bob's hormone imbalance. If you want to talk, just let me know. But I have to say you look amazing. I have talked to my mom, she seems very laid back. There is something I may have not made clear to you. The bride is my cousin, you will be meeting my mother today. Gina was silent for a while. I would like that. The wedding went without a hitch, both the day and the unexpected attendance of Gina. Everyone wanted to meet her and it didn't help that she caught the bride's bouquet. Mom, as moms do, assumed that Gina had replaced Greta in my heart. I said that I was no longer with Greta but told her Gina was just a friend. We are not there yet, I thought. But she ignored what I was saying and insisted that she would love Gina to be her daughter-in-law. Of course, Gina stayed by my side most of the time, sitting close to me, holding my hand or arm. We danced for the first time in close contact. It really dawned on me how well we were matched. In her heels she was just that bit shorter than me. We said our farewells and headed back home. Simon, I've had a wonderful day. Your family are charming and I really got on with your mom. But most of all I loved being taken as a woman, the assumption I am your girlfriend and all the compliments. I am pleased you enjoyed yourself, I had hoped you would. And I was very proud of you and that you were my plus one, or rather you took Greta's place. I hope I was more than your plus one, she laughed. Anyway, I've made a decision today. I'm going to allow my female hormones to continue to feminize me. Next term I'm going back to university as a woman. I don't know why. But I do enjoy being Gina more than Bob and I want to find out who is the real me. That's good news, one step closer. Whatever path you take I will support you all the way. There was one thing though. I am thinking of moving out, but you, Sue and Sophie are the only real friends I have. But I'm still a man, so will it be okay if we continue to share our bedroom? Yes of course, nothing has really changed. Although I suppose you will wear a nightdress now. I hadn't thought of that. I'll buy one tomorrow. Maybe a diaphanous one. She had such a bewitching laugh. Bob became Gina and was accepted by everyone she came across. Some, who should have known, didn't even know it was Bob and thought that Gina was a new girl. Her mom helped her out with a new wardrobe, but with the second year finals coming up she only needed everyday student clothes for the summer. The flat tenancy was coming to an end and Sue and Sophie were graduating. So I asked Gina about what she was going to do next year. I've decided, whether I'm transgender or not, to transition. Being a woman is a far better life for me. Do you want to share a flat with me for our final year? It will cost both of us more, but I think you would want a friendly face and not strangers to live with. You are right and I can't think of anyone I would rather be with. You do realize we could only afford a one-bedroom flat. Yes, I'm happy to share with you, even your bed. That was a surprise. There is something I have to tell you. I would only want to have sex with a woman. Sharing a bed with you is fine with me, but I have my red lines. That's a relief. I don't think I've gone far enough on this unexpected journey to have sex with a man, if at all. We found a furnished flat not far from the university that we could afford, and yes, it had a double bed. We moved in and for all intents and purposes we were a couple, but not lovers. Not yet, Gina wasn't ready as far as I was concerned. Being the final year our studies took priority. I stopped feeding Gina hormones, pleased that the university health center now looked after her. Her body continued to develop and she became more emotional. She had laser treatment to remove her beard and body hair, and underwent speech therapy. Her voice had been convincing but it was her weakest point. She didn't need any other interventions. Living together and sharing a bed, it was inevitable that we would become more intimate. We kissed and we enjoyed her new breasts. It was never said, but neither of us ventured beyond each other's waists. We were lying together one night when Gina asked, Simon, are you awake? Yes, Gina. I've made a decision. 
I intend to have the operation after the final exams to become a complete woman. I love you and want to spend the rest of my life with you, if you would have me. Are you sure? Having the operation, I mean. Yes, I don't think I'm ever going to meet anyone else and have a fulfilling relationship. I've never had a girlfriend, I'm just too girlish. And I have no interest in men, only you. You are the exception. Thank you, I have no interest in men either. My love for you is my exception too. I then took the plunge, I could wait any longer. Gina, will you marry me? Yes. We kissed. We arranged to hold the wedding after Gina would have fully recovered from her operation and would be a woman for real. Our mothers were disappointed when we said we would not be having children. I didn't say why to mine and there was no hint that she suspected anything. I did ask Gina if she wanted to adopt, but she already had a career planned, but now as a woman. The day after her final exam, Gina checked into the clinic for her gender reassignment surgery. It was successful and she is now recovering. I decided not to look, I'll wait until our wedding night. No sex before marriage. Our mothers took over our wedding plans. It was going to be traditional, but they were going to pay. As two new graduates we were very grateful. Gina's mum acted as if Gina had always been her daughter, as if Bob had never been her son. I don't know how she did it but the local vicar agreed to marry us in church. But Gina was now officially a woman having completed her transition and all the legal stuff. My mum helped out with the rings, so at least Gina had an engagement and wedding ring she could be proud of the first time I saw Gina in her wedding dress was when she was coming down the aisle followed by Susan and Sophie, her bridesmaids. The dress's simplicity suited her with a natural waist and a smooth skirt that flowed lightly onto the floor behind. It was sleeveless with a V-neckline that framed her delicate bust. When she reached me I could see the dress had a V-shaped open back with two bows that fell from her shoulders. She didn't wear a veil, but her hair was worn up and woven with small yellow and white meadow flowers. An unexpected but very welcome guest was Greta, newly returned from Australia with her degree. Simon, she's lovely. You are a very lucky man. She is so outgoing and personable, I think Gina and I are going to become good friends. We never said it to each other that we had drifted apart while at university, but she is a long-time friend, if no longer my intended. Three years after I first saw my future wife, it was time. Bob was now Gina and my wife. I helped her off with her wedding dress to reveal her naked body underneath. Wow, no bridal lingerie? Yes, well spotted. I wanted to reveal myself to you as your Eve, naked as nature intended. As a new-born woman starting her new life as your wife, weren't you worried someone might realize you were naked under your dress? How could they tell? It was fun imagining what they might think. It was now time to consummate our marriage. I'm not going to tell you something that's personal to Gina and I, sorry. Anyway, I suspect you will have a pretty good idea. But I will tell you this. I was surprised, given her history, how well she performed. Greta is definitely second best, she would never replace Gina. We were lying on top of the bed still naked enjoying our post codal bliss. Gina was cuddled up to me, her head on my shoulder and her hair spread about her. Her shorter and slender body fitted perfectly with mine, her breasts pressed against my side as she played with my chest hair. Darling, she said softly, you are very special to me, please don't ever leave me. I cannot imagine ever living with anyone else, my love is too great. You have nothing to worry about. You do realize that although I now have the body of a woman, my feelings towards men have not changed. I love you very much as a person, as you. I know you are handsome, I see the envious looks from other women and I'm very proud you are my husband. You are a kind and caring man and I can't imagine spending the rest of my life with anyone else. So do you still think of yourself as a man? Oh no, I'm now a woman in mind and body. But up until last year I was still a man. I was often mistaken for a girl as my body hadn't developed much beyond that of a young teenage boy and I never developed friendships until I met you. Boys didn't want to be mates with someone who could be mistaken for a girl. 
And as for girlfriends, I just wasn't manly enough. I did get some approaches from gay men, but such a relationship was not for me. So you are still attracted to women? Yes and no, I do find women attractive, but I'm not interested because I have you. What about men? Oh, no I have no interest in men, if in the unlikely event I lose you I would either become celibate or seek a woman for a lesbian relationship. Wouldn't you want to make use of your new equipment? I came to realize that keeping my balls and not having a vagina was becoming a barrier, I was not fulfilling my life. When I first dressed as a girl, I was so taken back. It seemed so natural, but the real difference in my life was that people treated me differently. I was no longer the boy man nobody was interested in, I was like a normal woman and became popular. And I loved the clothes and being pretty. I had never achieved anything notable in my life until I won that contest, and against real girls. Then when my breasts started to bud, I knew I was meant to be a woman. And then my friendship with you grew into love and I could feel it was reciprocated but could not progress because I wasn't a real woman. But when I decided to have the op and you proposed, I realized that my unexpected journey was culminating in something wonderful. And I knew I had reached it when you entered me tonight and I experienced my first organism. So to answer your question, I want to make use of my new equipment but only for you, my love. I had no idea that first evening when I fell in love with Bob and knew he was going to be my wife, how it was going to happen. A series of serendipitous events with one intervention from me turned Bob into Gina and a lonely student into my wife. Oh, what a lucky man I am. Our love is well worth my nefarious deed. But I shall never tell.